Hello, everyone, and welcome to another SEJ Marketing Think Tank webinar. Today, we're going to talk about a fun topic. We're going to talk about Instagram, and specifically, we're going to talk a bit about how to get more engagement on Instagram. Um, Instagram has definitely been one of the uh, visual social sites that's really been growing the most for from my perspective as well. So it's going to be really interesting to kind of get into some of the tips and tricks. And we're going to get into it today with Kelsey Jones, who is the executive editor at our very own Search Engine Journal. So uh, welcome, uh, Kelsey. Thank you for coming and presenting today. And uh, if you want to give us a quick introduction about yourself, and then I'll go through some housekeeping afterwards. Sure. Hi, Brent. Um, so before I talk about myself, I just want to plug our, our new rebranded podcast really quickly. Um, so Search Engine Nerds, we rebranded from Marketing Nerds, and it's a biweekly show. So we'd love to have you guys subscribe on iTunes and Google Play. Um, episodes are every other Friday. So a little bit about me. Uh, like Brent said, I'm the executive editor of SCJ, and then I also have experience helping brands get found online through SEO, social media, and content strategy. And I'm on Twitter and Instagram and Snapchat at Wonderwall7 if you guys have any questions or want to continue the conversation. Awesome. Uh, thank you very much. So as I mentioned, I'm really excited to get into this. But before we jump into the you know different tips and, and run through the presentation, I just want to run through a little bit of housekeeping stuff, um, basic kind of run-of-the-mill stuff that I think you'll find important if you're watching this and participating. First thing is, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, anything of that sort, something that you feel like you are is appropriate to say in public. Uh, we, we encourage you to please utilize the, uh, the webinar system. There is a question box in the bottom where you can ask questions and we will get to all of those questions as we can. Um, another way that we're gonna take questions is through Twitter using the hashtag SEJ Think Tank as one word, SEJ Think Tank. Um, and, and we'll also be tracking that to make sure the questions get in. I'll be tracking all of those questions uh, for the end of the presentation when we do a rather long or a large uh, Q&A session. Um, we will be having um, a number of polls. I think there's two polls in this presentation. That'll be your opportunity to jump in and participate and uh, you know, give us some of your feedback. Uh, as to you know what you're thinking or what your involvement is with Instagram. Um, we will do our best throughout this entire presentation to make sure that we link resources. If Kelsey mentioned something that she's using as a tool or something like that, we're going to make sure that we get the resource to you as a link or as a reference so that you can go find it yourself or use it. If we miss something, just let us know uh, and we'll make sure that we get the resource. All of this will be presented in a recap. All the questions, all the answers, the presentation itself, everything will come out in a recap post on Search Engine Journal within the next day or two. Um, so you will be able to share that with anybody that might have missed it or a recap if you you know, want to watch it a second time or you want to get into some of those questions and then and those answers. Um, lastly, I would say and request that we do have a small survey that we run at the end of these webinars. And they really are... Uh, you know, reviewed and looked at to kind of get your feedback and help us improve what we're doing. So if you have some feedback, if you loved something, if you hated something, just let us know, uh, you know, uh, with the survey at the end, and we will definitely try to make sure we uh, make improvements as needed. So uh, without any further ado, Kelsey, let's jump into engagement on Instagram. Awesome. Thanks, Brent. Oh, and uh, happy International Women's Day today to everyone, all the women that are listening. Thanks guys for being here. So uh, today we're going to cover some of the basics of getting higher engagement on Instagram. So that includes uh, design, some of uh, my favorite tools and the tools SEJ uses, how hashtags can help you, um, how to get more followers, and how to engage with that audience once you get them, and then tracking mentions of your brand and how that can help engagement, um, setting up an editorial schedule for sending posts out, and then finding Finally, how promotions like giveaways or sweepstakes can help you as well. So uh, I just want to kick it off with a poll um, that Brent will facilitate, and that's going to help me uh, shape the presentation. All right. So the first poll, pretty straightforward, pretty easy. Are you already using Instagram for your business? Uh, yes, no, but I want to. No, personal only. So. Um, 
This is specifically asking if you use Instagram for business, not just if you use it, but if you use it for your business. And again, the options are yes, no, but I want to, and no, uh, personal only. I guess the last one, uh, you you know, I mean, uh, I guess you could say no, but I, I want to if it's uh, you're not using it at all, right? And you're obviously watching because you want to. So we'll let people uh, get some of these polls in, these answers in. Um, I'm just going to make sure I give everybody a chance to vote. Uh, and we're just about there. So I'm going to go ahead and share the results. One second. Here we go. So, yes, quite a few people are actually using it for business, which, you know, I don't know about you, Kelsey, but doesn't really surprise me um, uh, mm -hmm. that much. But Yeah, I think a lot of brands realize that it's important, but they don't understand how they can best be utilizing it. So that's what I wanted to help with uh, today. So can you see my slides again? Yes. Okay, so moving on. So the first thing I wanted to touch on with is design because Instagram is a very visual platform. So design is everything. So I'm gonna show you a couple examples of uh, carefully curated Instagram profiles. And you can see the difference between a profile that really puts thought and effort into a theme or overall visual look of images versus someone who's just sharing images randomly. So um, this is an example of a bad Instagram post, unfortunately. So this is a realtor group in Kansas City where I live. Um, it's just two of the realtors posing in front of a piece of art in their office, and it has their logo, which adding your logo is, you know, can be a good thing, but it's just something really basic and not very visual appealing. Um, Instagram is definitely more artsy than uh, you know, Twitter or Facebook. So think about that um, whenever you're posting something. And if something just isn't really visually appealing, then you're better off just not posting it. So here's a good example of an Instagram post. So this is from Charlie Hustle. They're a local uh, t-shirt shop here in KC. And they're well known for these heart shirts. Um, they got really popular here in KC and all these different colors. So of course we have an, a baby which is adorable enough, but then they set uh, him against a colored sheet which has a really eye-catching pa uh, pattern which matches visually really well with, with the shirt because the shirt's in red and everything else is in black and white. So, you know, they could have just laid the t-shirt by itself on a white background, but they stepped it up. They had a real baby on a pattern sheet which really matches their overall aesthetic. So if we look at their Instagram uh, profile as a whole, you can see that it's very visually um, calming and the focus is on the shirts. So there's different people wearing the shirts. So you can see how it looks on different people, uh, the different colors that they come in, and even uh, they folded them really cool in that bottom right-hand corner um, where the design is making up is made up of all the different shirts. So just really cool way to promote their products on Instagram and taking it a step further than just sharing a photo of the shirt. Here's another good example, uh, Yelp, Kansas City. I love Yelp. I am a Yelp elite, so I do events with them sometimes. And so because Yelp does a lot of reviews about local businesses and food, you'll see that a lot of these photos are close-ups of food, which definitely makes you want to visit that restaurant. You know, Yelp could have just taken a photo of the restaurant itself or even the outside of the restaurant. But instead of that, they decided to focus on what matters, which is actually the food. And so whenever you're cultivating your Instagram, profile you want to think about what people actually care about instead of what you want to showcase because visually demonstrating what people care about is what is going to get that engagement on Instagram so I wanted to share a couple image tools even if you don't have a graphic design background and can't make you know photos like Charlie Hustle or Yelp KC um, you can make images for your profile that really stand out and kind of show that you spent the time so the first one is Canva. So Canva, for the most part, is free. Um, they do have some paid collateral like images or certain backgrounds. But this is what we use at Search Engine Journal's Instagram account. So we have our um, logo, which is on a transparent background, so it can be used on any um, color background. And then we also have overall uh, 
takeaways from our stories that we're promoting. So since we're a publisher, it makes sense to have text on our images. I talk a little bit later about how um, sometimes a lot of text on images isn't a good idea, but it really depends on how you're laying it out and um, what your industry is. So it works for us because we're a publisher. So we have our takeaways just in a really nice layout that's easy to read. And then we have a category link in our bio of our Instagram profile that links to all the stories we've talked about on Instagram. So with Moxie.my my company, I really like using Pablo by Buffer, and it's a free tool. You might have to have a Buffer account, but they have free accounts um, if you want to use it. So again, it lets you save your logo so you can put it on your images. And because we do a lot of marketing, um, we just do quote images, and they work really well for us. So uh, Pablo has a really great uh, Creative Commons uh, database of images, so we just use those, and then we can overlay text in different fonts to whatever fits the images so as you can see it's it's an overall cohesive feel even though the images are pretty different comparing one to the other um, overall the logos in the same place it's an image with a quote so it's a theme that makes sense and is cohesive for what we're trying to do so a few other great design tools that I recommend um, these are all free except for Photoshop uh, PicMonkey, they have a paid version, but they do have a free account. QuotesCover.com, um, obviously Photoshop is pretty expensive, but if you're going to do more advanced editing, it's worth it. Uh, Pixlr Editor, and then GIMP is a free software program that is a lot like Photoshop. I won't say it's a knockoff because I don't know if that's what they want to be known as, but it's pretty similar to Photoshop. So if you want to make some basic Photoshop edits but don't want to buy Photoshop or buy the license, uh, try GIMP first and see if it works for you. So before we go to the next part of the program, I just want to touch on a question that I'm sure a lot of you are asking already. What if I have a boring industry? You know, Is it possible for me to have a boring industry and still be on Instagram? I say yes if you focus on content that your target audience is interested in. So for example, if you're a plumber, sharing photos of dream bathrooms that maybe um, you could find that you have permission to share on a Creative Commons site or asking for permission you know, on a designer site to use. Um, that'd be something that would appeal to your target audience. Um, you know, sharing photos of bathrooms or you know, great sinks or things like that. It is related to your industry, but it's making it more interesting instead of just, you know, here's some pipes that we use or what have you. Uh, manufacturing. So a lot of times um, people in the manufacturing industry struggle with this. And so I think what's really interesting is the process. So if you're making, I don't know, rubber gaskets, um, maybe share some Instagram photos about your factory and how you make the gaskets, you know, you, and are there some patterns there, you know, all the gaskets coming out on the assembly line, things like that. Um, there's a really cool way to make a creative artsy spin on it instead of just talking about the products you offer. Um, talk about how they're made. Um, office supplies. Um, I was thinking about this because I've been rewatching The Office on Netflix. So uh, focus on, you know, company culture. Um, as seen, you know, at certain events, customer features. So, you know, our office supplies as seen at the Huffington Post offices. Ask customers to send in, you know, photos of your supplies being used in their office. That's a really great way to show um, positive customer interaction and then also your culture, especially if you have fun office supplies or things that are used really regularly that maybe people aren't thinking of. So with that being said, let's move on to hashtags. So, um, hashtags are really useful on Instagram. I would say they're even more important than Twitter. Um, tons of active Instagram users are uh, using hashtags to find uh, accounts and content on Instagram. So I'm going to go through a couple of my favorite tools and how to use hashtags effectively. So the first thing I want to touch on is Instagram autocomplete. So I wrote an article about this for SEJ a couple months ago, but I think this is a hidden gem of Instagram. So as you're typing, um, it automatically brings up related hashtags to the hashtag you're currently typing, and then it shows you the number of posts that, of people that have used that hashtag. 
So, for example, I posted a photo of my dog and my husband's head because they have the same color hair. And so as I'm typing dogs, it brought up dogs of Instagram, which I've used before. And then it shows me dogs, which has over 20 million posts, which is a lot. And then dogstagram, which is something I wouldn't have thought of. So this tool is really great because it gives you hashtags that maybe you wouldn't have thought of. For instance, I didn't know Dogstagram was a thing. Um, you can use your finger to scroll in that gray area as well, and it would show you uh, more Insta Instagram hashtags as you're typing and how many posts are using that hashtag. So it's a good way to gauge not only what hashtags you should be using, but also um, related ones and how people are talking about your industry buzzwords. I would recommend. Um, using 5 to 15 hashtags per post. Um, some people put them right in the caption, which is fine. Other people uh, post them as a comment to the post just to get them out of the way, but it still makes them um, indexable in, in Instagram search. It's just whatever you want to do. Um, Instagram does have a higher tolerance for hashtags um, besides Twitter. So in studies, people have found that um, you know, having five to 15 hashtags on Instagram doesn't negatively impact its visibility or engagement. So feel free to use a lot more hashtags than what, you know, you've been used to on Twitter, which is usually, you know, two to four hashtags. Another tool I really like, which is free, is this Instagram search engine. So if I just type in an industry term, it's going to show me popular hashtags that people are using on Instagram. And again, this is really great for brainstorming and figuring out the related hashtags and content that people are talking about. So I looked up SEO and I found a few that I wouldn't have thought of using um, or thought of creating content around. So responsive websites, communications, e-commerce solutions. So that would maybe take some more research to see what posts are using those hashtags, but that might be um, a way to come up with more content and then you're going to get more engagement. If people are already interested in these things and using those hashtags, then you know that maybe you should be using them as well. Hashtagify is another tool. Um, they kind of give you a graphical format of the top 10 hashtags related to your key term. And then it also shows you, if you mouse over it, the correlation to your original hashtag. So you can see on the right here, um, if I mouse over marketing, um, over 11% of the posts that use SEO also use the hashtag marketing. So it's just really interesting to see related hashtags again and how people are using them. And finally, uh, hashtag.org is another one that I like to use. They have a paid version, but just um, an alternative to Hashtagify if you want to look at even more suggestions. So kind of to sum it up, hashtags, sorry, hashtags help you attract followers. Um, you can use popular hashtags to get more followers and likes. Um, it helps you grow community. So you can search by hashtags that are related to your industry services and then comment on posts and um, get more engagement that way. And make sure it's a, a thoughtful comment, you know. Um, really loved this post about marketing. I'm surprised that people use Twitter in the manufacturing industry or whatever, something specific to what those people are sharing. And then finally, it also helps you research trends so you can see what's, pop, what's most popular and create your content around it. So it's good for brainstorming. And that brings me to the next poll question. Awesome. So launching the poll, we're going to ask the question, how often do you post on your business Instagram? Once a day, two to four times per week, or I don't have a business Instagram. So again, how often are you posting uh, updates on your business Instagram account? Once a day, two to four times per week, or you don't have an account at all. Um, and again, I'm going to give everybody just a little bit of time to, to vote real quick, um, and then we'll uh, show the results and see where that takes us. All right. We've got about 75% of people have voted, so I'm going to go ahead and close the poll and show the results. Interesting. 32% don't have a business account at all. Interesting. Yeah, so it looks like, I mean, it's fairly even, two to four times per week. Um, it doesn't surprise me. All righty. And yours is okay? showing, and yep. Okay. 
So let's move on to followers. So uh, one tenet of Instagram is um, you need to follow people to get followed. So a lot of people will follow anyone who follows them. So if you start following people that are in your industry or who are your target um, audience, then you're going to grow your followers as well. And then it's also going to help you find more people to engage with. So once you have a good amount of people you're following, you can then just scroll in your feed on Instagram and comment on posts or like you know, other people's posts, and that's going to um, have them spread the love back to you. Instagram is a very reciprocal network, I found. And so um, if you're spending, you know, even just 5 to 15 minutes a day on it, um, you will see that steady growth. So whenever it comes to finding followers, hashtags are going to help us again for this. So this feature that I'm going to talk about is only in the app. So you can't look at uh, these search results in the desktop version of Instagram. So the desktop version of Instagram just shows you top posts for hashtags. It doesn't break it down into people, tags, or places. So that being said, um, the first thing you want to look at is top hashtags for your industry and then you can follow accounts in the people results based on that hashtag. So in this example, I decided to use embroidery because that's something I like to do for fun is uh, cross, strips, cross stitch, I can't talk today, and embroidery. And so if I had an embroidery business, I could just use that hashtag and then start following people that I think would be interested in my service and so even spending you know a couple minutes a day on this it really does start to add up just make it you know a regular part of your workday and it doesn't seem like that much work at all even if you're standing in line to get your morning coffee or you're on the subway you know taking a couple minutes really does make an impact so another thing I like to look at besides the people is looking at who's checking into businesses that are related to what I'm offering. So in this example, again, I have embroidery. So I looked under the places tab and it showed me all the um, places that are using the hashtag or they have that embroidery um, mention in their name. And so once I wanted to find people to follow, once I, sorry, once I found this list, I could then go in to find people to follow. So if I clicked on one of these results, it's going to show me all the people that have checked into this business. So on Instagram, you can use a geotag whenever you're making a post, and it's just allowing you to tag a business in the post. So it's just saying, you know, I took this photo here. So when you search by places, you can see all the photos that were taken at that business. So that would allow me to find more people to follow, especially um, if they're in my local area. So this works really well for local businesses, um, you know, no matter your business. Um, you know, a restaurant, a clothing store, um, something really niche like this embroidery example. You're going to find people who've checked into these businesses, and then that's going to give you local people to follow. Um, it does just show you your local area. You can't search, you know, if I had a client, say, in San Francisco, I couldn't search um, just a top-level keyword and then find places. It would automatically show me places in my local area. So maybe that'll change, but that's how it is right now. And then um, another thing that I like to do is look at the top tag you know for my master key keyword hashtag and again go through related hashtags and find more people to follow just repeat the process that I just went through with the people and places so um, embroidery art would be good um, embroidery design would probably be people that are interested in what I have to offer so you're just kind of repeating the process and Instagram is just helping you figure out what the most popular hashtags are so you know where to spend your time so let's talk a little bit more about growing that community like I touched on. Um, you know, you want to leave thoughtful comments on other people's um, Instagram accounts and posts, but then you also want to do it on your own as well. I see an overwhelmingly amount of business Instagram accounts that just post something and leave it. And like I said, Instagram is very interactive. People are always leaving comments, you know, liking stuff, saying nice post, whatever. Um, you want to make sure that you're answering those. So for example, for example, um, Mod Cloth is a, I don't know how to describe it, a hipstery clothing store, vintage 
clothing store. Um, they just recently launched some uh, actual retail stores. They're mostly online. So they posted a post on Instagram about the Oscars, you know, which were a couple weeks ago. So they shared um, three women that are wearing one of their dresses. And so you can see in the first arrow, uh, somebody asked which one is the teal color dress. So she really liked that. She wanted to know more about it. And you can see Mod Cloth answered uh, with the second green arrow. Um, you know, that's our, you know, Brave New World maxi dress in fern. So the person gave the uh, name of the product and then the color. So Unfortunately, in Instagram, you can't link in captions of posts or in comments. Um, you can share URLs, but they're not clickable. The only clickable link is in the bio. So hopefully that would change. That will change in the future. But for now, um, this was a good workaround. So you know, the user Dogs Are Happiness knows that they can just go to modcloth.com and search Brave New World Maxi Dress and click the fern, and they have the dress. So it's going to take a little bit more effort, but that's just how Instagram is right now. Um, but think about if Mod Cloth hadn't answered. I mean, that's a potential sale that they just got from Instagram that they would have lost if they hadn't answered. So another thing that I think a lot of businesses uh, miss is tracking all brand mentions. So of course, you know to you know, track industry keywords and track mentions of your username. But you also want to think about how users are attempting to talk about you online. So one thing that I found, especially when I worked with Caitlin, our social producer on Search Engine Journal social media, is a lot of people use hashtag SE Journal instead of at symbol SE Journal. And so we uh, track that a lot. We track the hashtag as well as our at mentions because you'd be surprised at how many people might be using, you know, hashtag mod cloth instead of at mod cloth. So you want to think about that. You also want to think about misspellings. So I'm going to show you an example using mod cloth again. So in this example, um, Francie posted a photo on her account in front of one of the new mod cloth stores. Um, it looks like it's in Portland, which is Portland's awesome, by the way. Um, shout out to anyone that's in Portland. I was there last year. Um, so you can see in the hashtags, um, she spelled mod cloth with an E at the end. And so um, there's no comment or anything from the mod cloth account on her uh, post. She did tag them correctly in the post itself. You kind of see by her username at the top. So that's good. But just think if she hadn't. Um, if she had just used that incorrect spelling of mod cloth, that would be a missed opportunity for mod cloth to connect with her. You know, a, a quick five second reply on this post from the mod cloth account saying something like, oh, we love it too. We're so happy that you're excited. I mean, that would have solidified her love for mod cloth even more and probably led to more sales because a lot of times customers on social media, especially, just want to be recognized and they love you know, when brands are showing that they're paying attention. So make sure that you're tracking common misspellings as hashtags and even as at mentions. So I'm sure a lot of people are also typing at mod cloth with an E at the end. Um, so just track those regularly um, and see if there's any posts coming up and don't forget to engage with them as well as people who are doing it correctly. So next, I just wanna talk really briefly about creating a schedule. So, you know, this could be a whole uh, post, or sorry, not post, webinar in itself, but I just want to talk about taking advantage of seasonal topics that come up because um, since Instagram uses hashtags so often, a lot of times holidays are really popular because people are using, you know, hashtag Christmas or Easter or whatever um, to, talk, to have conversations on Instagram. And so taking advantage of those seasonal topics when it's appropriate is always a good thing. So a little stat that kind of ties into the last poll question we had. Um, there was a study in 2016 that showed that the top brands on Instagram now post about five times per week, which is an in increase of over 50% compared to 2015. So brands are posting more on Instagram um, than they were in years past. So, you know, a lot of times it's pretty easy to just 
create a bunch of posts at once and then use a tool like Buffer to have them schedule out. So the Instagram API, API is pretty tricky. It makes you manually post every time. Um, there's no thing that just does it automatically for you. But we use Buffer at Search Engine Journal and we like it. It's not the easiest thing, but that's how the API is for now. So let's talk a little bit about when taking advantage of um, seasonal things or cultural things that are happening is a good idea. And before I go into this example, I just want to give a heads up that um, talking about things that are really sensitive like politics or 9-11 is probably never a good idea. Um, you just want to stay away from it. I mean, I, I could share tons of examples of brands that have tried to capitalize on things like that, and it's just gone horribly wrong because it just wasn't tasteful. So be sure to stick to holidays that are either fun or, you know, are, are pretty easy, like Christmas or New Year's, things like that. So in this example, um, I have a client that is a chain of pizza restaurants in the Kansas City Metro, Sarpinos, and so they had National Pizza Day a couple weeks ago. And of course, pizza itself is really fun to do on social media, but we wanted to take advantage of that. So our first post um, was just simply about National Pizza Day, just celebrating it. Um, you know, we used the hashtag best day ever um, just for some fun. National Pizza Day was the main hashtag of the day. And um, that got actually got a lot of engagement. Um, this is a starter account. It's pretty small still. Um, we actually had people calling into the stores asking if we were doing any specials for National Pizza Day because of this Instagram post on the left and just because of the Pizza Day in general was trending on other social media networks like Facebook and Twitter. So we decided to do a special. The owners got together and they decided to give out an order of free cheesy breadsticks, which look amazing by the way since it's about lunchtime here in Kansas City. Um, so if you ordered from these certain stores and you mentioned National Pizza Day, you got a free cheesy breadstick. So this isn't my best graphic work on um, Canva, but we had to get something out fast because the owners decided to do a special after all. So I um, listed the bare bones what they needed to know in the graphic and then gave um, the applicable hashtags for the cities in the caption. So this was just a good way to harness a free holiday that's, you know, maybe completely made up, but it did pretty well for this uh, Sarpino's chain of restaurants in KC and they were happy. So here's an example of a missed opportunity. So, you know, it's the beginning of March now. When I was putting this uh, presentation together, it was in February. So I decided to look up the hashtag Easter just because I knew that was coming up. Easter isn't until April. But I thought, you know, let's just see what's out there. And this um, girl on the left, Sweet Sugar Bell, she does a lot of fun desserts, and she's already using the hashtag Easter. And you can see all of the comments that she got um, from this post even though Easter at that time was over two months away. Um, so you can see people are asking about the little decorations and she mentions Wilton. So then I decided to go to the Wilton Instagram account to see if they're doing anything about Easter yet because their target audience is already talking about it. I mean, Sweet Sugar Bell wasn't the only Instagram account that was already posting about Easter this year. Um, unfortunately, nobody on the Wilton Instagram is posting about Easter yet. So I know, again, it was really early, but you want to think about when is your audience going to start talking about things that are coming up. Um, if you sold school supplies, for instance, you know, back to school for a lot of schools isn't until August or September, but people start searching for new supplies in July. So you want to think about not only when the actual day of whatever the event is, but when your target audience is actually going to be thinking about it and creating content about it on social media and Instagram uh, in particular. So in this case, Wilton Cakes could have said something about, we're so excited for Easter coming up, here's some of our upcoming designs, and shared um, some new products that are coming out. And if they use the Easter hashtag um, or you know cookie decorating like Sweet Sugar Bell did, that would help involve them in the conversation. Um, they could have also commented on this post, you know, if they were monitoring the hashtags, uh, Wilton Cakes, for example, and then Easter, um, they could have said, you know, thanks so much for mentioning us, blah, 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 but they didn't. So finally, um, to touch on 
you know, creating an editorial calendar around seasonal topics that are going to help you get that engagement. Um, don't overreach, like don't try too hard. So this result came up uh, with the hashtag Easter and Easter 2017. So it's a cheeseburger made out of chocolate, which I agree is really cool, but it's not really related to Easter. I know there's chocolate in Easter, but this is a little reaching. Um, so you want to make sure that the content you're creating makes sense for your audience and you're not trying to just talk about Easter, for example, because it's trending. So finally, um, again, something that could probably be a whole webinar on itself, um, promotions. So I've seen giveaways and promotions generating a lot of engagement. So I just wanted to give a, cu a couple quick tips on that um, before we get to questions. So here's a couple guidelines. So when it comes to doing promotions or giveaways, include a mixture of industry hashtags. Um, so you know, if you're giving away a new printer, you also might want to do office supplies or office inspiration or whatever related hashtags come up for that. Um, you also want to be mindful of hashtag spam. So obviously, as you can imagine, the hashtag giveaway does generate a lot of spam. Um, unfortunately, just like with any social media account, there are um, any social media platform, there are a lot of spam accounts. So giveaway is used a lot and so that's why you want to also include industry hashtags to kind of cut through the clutter and the noise a little bit. You also want to set clear guidelines in the text version um, of the post so when the deadline is, what's expected from the people to enter, um, tagging any applicable mentions of accounts that maybe you're doing a promotion with you, things like that. And then it's also really cool to announce the winner so maybe you could Ha, uh, share a photo of them with the product they won or just a really pretty simple text um, of the user winner's um, name, you know, like Ashley N um, using Pablo or Canva. Um, people like knowing who the winner is, especially if you have a bigger account. I found that people will ask who won. So you want to use the same design aesthetic that you have for the rest of your profile. So, you know, if Charlie Hustle was doing a giveaway, it would be really weird if suddenly they just showed um, a simple shirt uh, laying, you know, on a white background because that doesn't fit their aesthetic. They would likely use models and, you know, maybe put giveaway over the post. So just make sure it fits whatever um, design aesthetic you're trying to use for your profile. So um, in this example, we have a healthy living blogger couple. So they're really popular on Instagram. As you can see, this post has almost 6,000 likes when I took the screenshot. So they did a campaign for a giveaway with eggs, Eglin's Best Eggs, and this is a perfect example of using the same design aesthetic. So most of their posts are about workouts or what they're eating. So they followed that theme here. Um, they posted these amazing looking breakfast tacos, and um, obviously I was a little hungry doing this uh, presentation because <laughs> a lot of my examples are about food. But um, they kept cleverly put the Eglin's best carton behind these delicious tacos. So they're tying in that they're doing something with Eglin's best, but they're also um, keeping to the theme, like I said, which was amazing food and workouts. And then in the text caption, they have uh, more info about what to do to win. And then they also mention that it's an ad. So I know we're talking mainly about your own business accounts, but if you ever do any ad campaigns with um, sponsors, make sure that you disclose that it's an ad, um, an ad giveaway, which they did here. So um, like I mentioned before, you don't want to use too much text. So in this example, they basically have a text on image version of what the caption text already says. So it would have made more sense here just to cut everything below um, the giveaway options because that's already stated in the text. You know, just a quick, you know, saying giveaway and then what they're giving away would have been enough. Um, obviously, it's still got a lot of engagement, over 500 comments, 1,800 likes. But again, you want to think about design aesthetic and um, you know clearing the clutter and making your brand um, more aesthetically pleasing. 
So here's a good example of text use. Um, this is another um, blogger that focuses on healthy living and beauty. So they did a giveaway for an Ulta gift card and they, as you can see, they give the examples in the text caption. But then on the left, they just, you know, keep it to the bare minimum uh, what it is. And they also, the image that they use for the background uh, really plays to the rest of the images on their Instagram. So it doesn't go, um, you know, way out of left field compared to what they're usually sharing. So to wrap it all up, um, I would recommend everything we talk about, you want to do a little bit of everything all at once. Um, combining them for best results is really where you're going to find the most success in terms of getting more likes, comments, and followers. So creating that design, um, using tools, don't make things harder than they need to be. Um, use five to ten hashtags. I know I said 15 earlier. Um, just experiment with it. Um, get followers by following people in your target audience. Um, engage with them both on your own posts and um, hashtag posts and your people you're following posts. Track mentions and misspellings that maybe are things you wouldn't have thought of. Uh, create an editorial schedule um, around things that are happening either with holidays or culturally or in current events. Um, while staying away from politics and things that might be touchy subjects. And then finally, uh, do promotions, you know, giveaways that are fun, um, just to get people engaged and interested in what you have to say. So that's all for me. Um, again, you can reach me or Search Engine Journal on Twitter and Instagram at Wonderwall7 or SC Journal. And my email um, is right there as well in case you have any questions. Thank you very much, Kelsey. That was really, really informative. Uh, I, I took quite a few notes, and I, I've got a couple of personal questions as well I want to follow up with. Um, before we jump into Q&A, um, just want to comment real quickly about the uh, next webinar that we're going to be doing on March 22nd, and this one's actually going to be for me. Yay. Um, and it's going to be about marketing in the altered reality world. Um, if you don't know about me, I'm very involved in futurism and I'm very interested in virtual reality and augmented reality and how it kind of affects the future of marketing and what people are using, you know, as far as those technologies in their current marketing campaign. So that's really what it's going to be all about is kind of looking at the different platforms, looking at kind of what the opportunities are uh, for virtual reality and marketing campaigns today, and then potentially what they're going to look like tomorrow and, and going forward. So if you're interested in that type of stuff, then hopefully I'll, I'll have some decent information there. Um, cool. So right now, um, I want to jump into Q&A. We have quite a few questions here, but if anybody has some follow-up questions or if you have questions from the Q&A responses, then continue to ask them in the uh, GoToWebinar question box or using the hashtag SEJ Think Tank uh, through Twitter. Um, but jumping right in, uh, we have a question right off the bat. It says, I work in an online plumbing and heating supply company. Um, how would you recommend designing our our Instagram theme. We typically post a lot of work done by contractors along with hacks that encourage engagement. Because of the content, it's difficult to keep the feed looking nice. So if you're working with outside people, I would set some guidelines. Um, you know, say we use these colors, this, these are the tools we use. Um, just setting some guidelines for anyone who's contributing content is always a good thing. Um, also, you know, if, if you're working with people and you find that it's not really fitting what you're trying to do, um, sometimes you just have to do it yourself. Um, I know that kind of sucks, but, you know, it might be more important just to keep the aesthetic and make sure it's looking nice. Um, and if, if, you know, you find the content you're sharing isn't really working, think a little bit more outside the box of what you could be doing that's more of the artistic side of what you offer. Awesome. Um, next question. Uh, what do you feel about automating the follow, unfollow process uh, as far as tools or anything like that? Uh, what is your thoughts around uh, utilizing some of those services to do that? So it's definitely uh, not allowed technically in, you know, the terms of service. Um, probably for all social media platforms like Facebook and, or not Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Um, so for that reason, I'm really wary. I have seen a lot of people use it and don't have a problem. Um, to me, 
maybe this makes me a little old school, but I'd rather just do it manually because there's been times when I've seen it go horribly wrong. The guy had a client that was um, their previous social media person did it and it ended up uh, following a ton of spam accounts. And so then, you know, this client's Twitter feed was just full of these spam accounts and it just was a nightmare to, um, you know, manly, manually unfollow or use a total unfollow. So to avoid stuff like that, um, I just don't use those type of tools. Um, I know it takes more time, but for me, the risks um, don't outweigh, you know, the reward for Am I saying that right? The reward doesn't outweigh the risk. There we go. So I do have a comment on this, if you don't mind me kind of throwing in my own personal comments as well, um, is that uh, I think that it's okay if anybody wants to automate. I think it's okay, but I don't think it's okay to do it kind of half-assed. And what I mean by that is like you could go in and use some of these programs and you can say, I only want to follow accounts that are being followed by these other accounts. So if you can go in and find influencers that you know are really being specific about who they follow and, and, and you know that they're not following anybody who's shady or they're going to be very, very related to what your topics are, then I think sometimes you can get away with that. Um, same thing could be said, like, you know, if I want to auto follow sometimes people that are like, uh, you know, doing the SCJ Summit, our conference that we do every year, right? I want to identify who's talking and doing those type of things, right? So I might... Um, I might look to, to follow people who are using that hashtag uh, because it's a very specific hashtag and I don't feel like many people would use it. So I definitely agree that like there's a lot of times these things go really, really wrong. But I feel like a lot of times if you're willing to take the time and really evaluate the tool, then you can you can kind of get away with using it uh, a little bit. Yeah, that's true. I mean, I don't obviously I don't use the tools, so I don't even know that you could set parameters like that. So I think you're right, just being really careful with how you use it and not just setting it and forgetting about it. I mean, regularly checking it um, is really important. So even if you're doing it manually, where do you think, like, how do you feel about the follower, uh, following follower kind of ratio thing? Do you think that you need to kind of be care careful of that so you don't end up following like 7,500 people and having only like 200, you know, followers? Yeah, I mean, it doesn't look good. You know, people, it's not like a, it's not going to negatively impact, you know, when your account's shown or seen in results or whatever, but it just doesn't really look right. Um, so I would try to always have more followers than, um, follow people you're following but I don't think like that's something to lose sleep over right I mean in the grand scheme of things there's so many other things that are more important like the content itself but I would say you know just as a best practice try not to um, overdo it with the following and just do it gradually and that's another reason why I like doing the manual way is because it is more gradual so um, you don't really see that flipped um, ratio unless you're a new account um, kind of an opposite question to this somebody asks what do you do when people follow you and then just unfollow you um, after you follow them they unfollow you back uh, it's, it, it, he indicates that it's kind of annoying to have this thing where somebody follows him he follows the person back and then they unfollow him and so how do you deal with that yeah I mean it's really annoying but that's just how it is. Like it's just like when um, SEOs complain about Google changing things. That's just how it is. Like I don't, you know, it's just uh, oh, how it is when it comes to doing social media work. Like it's just a little, you know, thing that's annoying, and there's nothing you can really do. And as long as you're following people that are ap applicable to your field or are your target audience, I mean, you're doing the right thing. Um, it's up to people to follow or who fo unfollow whoever they want. So um, I know that's probably not a, you know an answer that's going to make it less annoying, but um, I don't I, know. I actually got. Like I actually got yelled at because, you know, sometimes you have the recommended list, right? Especially on Instagram now, it gives you that little number three up there. And you're like, oh, what is this? Notifications or something? You click on it, it's like three suggested people you should follow, right? Um, and so I keep getting into these suggested lists and I'll sometimes go through them. And I, I actually... Uh, 
uh, followed somebody, but it was the wrong person. It meant to be the person right above them. And so I unfollowed right away and I followed the person above and went about my day. But I had three messages from the person I had followed and unfollowed that was just like really irate about my marketing strategy to follow and unfollow him. And I was like, relax, buddy. Just didn't want to yeah. follow you. <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah. you know. uh, so I, that was one instance that recently happened to me that I thought was kind of funny. Yeah. In the grand scheme of things, like, that's people shouldn't be getting mad. You know what I mean? Like there's just so many other things to worry about. I feel like hashtags. Um, this is an interesting question. I'd never thought about it this way, but can a hashtag be overpopulated? Um, I want to be visible within the hashtag. I don't want to be overlooked. So are there some hashtags that are just too popular and you're going to end up disappearing too quickly? That's a really good question. Um, so for things like fashion, Obviously, that's going to be completely overdone. So you want to be as niche as possible. Um, you can still include that hashtag. I mean, that's why I was saying you can use a lot of hashtags on Instagram. You could still include that top level, but then also use um, you know the hashtag tools I mentioned to find ones that are more niche. And then also think of hashtags that are more niche. So fashion is super broad, but maybe you only offer um, women's shoes. And so that's what the majority of your hashtag should be about, more about specifically what you offer in that industry instead of just the top level name of the industry. So it is possible for it to be overpopulated. Things are overpopulated, unfortunately. So I try to use a mixture of, you know, the top level overpopulated hashtag and then really niche ones that are going to um, probably get me more engagement, but it's kind of about you know making sure you're hitting all your bases. So what do you um, you you mentioned that, and I 100 percent agree with that. I mean, there's no reason not to put both, right? I mean, you have the the, the flexibility. You mentioned like five to ten at one point. You mentioned fifteen, but you can actually use thirty hashtags before your description disappears, right? So thirty is the magic number, and then all of a sudden your whole description disappears. Um, why not use 30? Like, I think most people that I've seen on Instagram, I feel like hashtags have just become an accepted part of it, right? They just, nobody really counts. Nobody really seems to care. Um, and it seems to have thrived. I mean, I remember the first year Instagram around, was around, I was criticizing it constantly saying, don't do this, don't do this, don't do this. But it seems to be the one place where people don't care about hashtags. You can go nuts and have fun. Um, why not do 30? Uh, on a regular basis? You can. I just look at it from you don't want to look spammy yourself. So I know it is an accepted um, part of the way people use Instagram, which I talked about. But, you know, I see some, you know, posts in my feed where people use like 20 hashtags and it just gets a little ridiculous. So for me, I think quality is more important than quantity. So you want to touch the, the high level, but then also just a few niche. Like, it just, I don't know. It, for me, visually, it kind of is a juxtaposition between, you know, this beautiful visual Instagram image and then 30 <laughs> hashtags. Also. You know, like, it just seems not, uh, you know, something that shouldn't go together. And I, I don't think it's bad. I just think the time it takes and the way it looks I don't like it. So, so maybe this is a personal choice, but. Yeah, I mean, uh, side note, just to say, because we were talking about hashtags, and if anybody's wondering about hashtags, I actually did a pretty decent test on this. I went out with uh, a bunch of friends that I knew that had anywhere from small accounts to very, very large accounts, and even some of my accounts that I have that are pretty high, you know, volume, you know, in the like ten thousand followers type range, right? Um, and even some that only have like a hundred followers. And I tested like a number of posts without hashtags and a number of posts with hashtags, and it was without question about you know double double the engagement on any post by using hashtags, um, you know, especially if you're using like five to 10 or more, uh, we saw almost double engagement across the board. So if anybody was wondering, you know, do I really need to do hashtags? I would say probably hashtags is one of the best things you can do on Instagram. Yes. Agreed. That's so going to help get you more visibility. What do you, uh, so jumping in, how is, okay. How is it a good idea to Hold on, I got to read this one time. <laughs> Is it a good idea to follow big accounts in my niche and comment on their top photos? 
um, and like it as well, how much is a chance they're going to actually follow me back after that? I mean, if it's a huge account, probably none. I mean, slim to none. Because if it's if it's like New York Times or Vogue or something, I mean, that has hundreds of thousands of followers, you know, probably little, you know, very slim. So again, you want to think niche. Um, the smaller, you know, smaller accounts you can target that would actually follow you back. You know, you want to do a mixture, but focus your time on what's going to get you the most results, whether that's the hashtags you use or the accounts you're choosing to interact with. Absolutely. What do you think about weekends? Update on weekends or more engagement on weekends? What, what, what is your feeling about weekday versus weekends for posting? I think it depends on what your industry is. So fashion, I would say yes. Um, publishing, probably not as big of a deal because people aren't in the office. Like Search Engine Journal, I don't think we publish on the weekends. Caitlin would probably know, but um, just because our audience, we still get traffic on the weekends, but not as much as Monday through Friday. So I would think about what your audience is doing um, and what, you know, if, if what you offer is related to what they do on the weekends. Quick question. You might have covered this in the presentation and I was taking a note or something, but uh, how do you feel about stories versus posts? I mean, I see a lot of people doing a lot of really good stories and then their their actual account has almost no pictures. What's the balance there? What do you think uh, about using story posts? Yeah, Lauren, uh, CJ's founder, God, I cannot talk today, was asking me about that um, and because it came out when I had already done this presentation. Um, and using the Snapchat stories. So, well, wait, so what I'm thinking of is now you can use multi-image posts. So you can scroll through images all in one post. And then there's also stories, which is a lot like Instagram. Anyway, yes. um, that's probably a whole, you know, other webinar again. But <laughs> um, I think it's a good idea if it's cohesive and it makes sense and they work together. Um, I don't I think the the jury's still out on how effective they are and if they're worth the time, but I do see a lot of big brands experimenting with it. So Perfect. I think because they're so new, it's worth experimenting if you can make it something cohesive. So um, if you were doing a story, you'd want to make sure they all relate together versus just here's three random snaps or not snaps posts that we took today. You know what I mean? Like there needs to be a theme. So my, my quick thought on it is because uh, I've I was thinking about this a lot as well is that I think that the stories are all the posts that lead up and surround the one that you choose for your 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 post. So if you're in an event, t typically you're taking 10, 15 pictures and you end up updating like one or two on your post page, right? All the other ones can be these these kind of story posts that kind of give context, you know, and surrounding and because they'll go away and they're kind of funny and they add some angles or they kind of give some insight. And then the ones that are the best pictures out of those end up going to the post. Yep, yeah, I think you're right. Awesome. I, I, I really love Instagram right now. I really think that there's like a lot of really cool things that are happening as far as the adoption. And I think it's really setting kind of a pattern for people's interaction there. I think it's kind of unique uh, consider, you know, compared to a lot of other social sites. So I thought I felt like, you know, a lot of the information here was very fresh and very interesting. And so I really appreciate the time that you spent to kind of go through it all and to answer all the questions. So thank you again, Kelsey. Yeah, thank you, Brent. And uh, that marks the end of our, our webinar. And again, I would like to ask everybody, we will be doing a quick survey. Uh, so if you can just stick around for a couple minutes and uh, uh, get this survey, then it will uh, help us out a lot. And if you have any last minute questions that we did not get to, please throw them in the question. Well, the question box is probably going to close, but you can use the SEJ Think Tank uh, hashtag and you can continue to get your questions in later. Uh, so thank you again. And until next time, I bid thee farewell. Thanks. Bye, everyone.